what is up you guys welcome back to my channel um this is my first video of 2020 um sorry it took so long i was kind of sick like right after new year's um and i was like struggling a little bit so now i'm finally back to film my first video of 2020 and it's gonna be my first mukbang too um i just got sarku right here it's like japanese boo teriyaki and I'm just going to be talking about my first semester of grad school. I've been wanting to do this video. And also the ending to season two of You. If you guys haven't watched that on Netflix, please go watch that. Like, that show is crazy. And I just can't believe, like, that whole season two. But um, if you want to hear more about that, then just stay tuned. Also, I'd like to point out that we're in the middle of January. And in Jersey right now, it's almost like 70 degrees. It was like that today and yesterday, so your girl is thriving in this weather. I got the deck door open, the breeze is coming in. That's why I'm recording here because the lighting is really good and I can feel the nice weather coming through the house. So that's why it's a little setup change. Also, by the way, if you hear the TV, it's literally right here and we're watching the playoff game. So don't mind um, the TV if you could hear it and the football game and stuff. Um, because it's playoff season, so. To start off this video, I'm just going to talk about um, my first semester at grad school because I just finished my last month. I took my finals and everything in like the middle of December. And um, for those of y'all who are wondering about grad school, like whether, to, whether it's worth it to go, like to apply and stuff like that, um, I just want to talk about my experience so the thing is I didn't go to a different school let's we could say I went to the same um, school as I did undergrad so it wasn't that huge transition for me because I already knew the campus and all that um, I knew exactly where the building was uh, so it wasn't really hard for me to transition into a new type of school and I also still commute so and I've been commuting all throughout undergrad so I'm still commuting through grad school um, so when it comes to that it wasn't that big of a transition the biggest transition really was obviously the workload um, it's a whole different type of environment especially because my undergrad is a huge school um, and I was a psych major so all my classes were super big and like these huge lecture halls um, and it was one of, it's those types of classes where it's hard for the professor to really know you and like get to know you and stuff. But in grad and in my grad school, it's a lot smaller and the classrooms are even set up in like a circle, like discussion form. Um, and you really get to know your professors and your classmates. So I kind of like that, that I was able, you were able to feel like we have our own community now in the grad school. So it didn't seem like such a huge school anymore, if that makes sense. So like I said, in undergrad, um, I graduated with a psychology major and then a minor in sociology. And then I'm going to grad school now uh, for applied behavior analysis. And I sh I'm probably going to make a whole separate video um, just explaining what exactly is ABA because a lot of people, including myself, don't know what that is. Like I didn't even know until I was in my grad school interview. Um, it's like a, well, it's not really fairly new, but it's becoming fairly new to the mainstream public um, outside of like the psych to the psychology community. So I think it's a really important thing for everybody to know because it could really be an innovative breakthrough uh, for families and parents, um, mostly who have children on the autism spectrum and the whole autism community as a whole. So I will make a whole separate video describing what exactly is ABA and what it entails and what I'm studying and everything. But just for this video, I'm, um, I'm just going to say that I'm studying that I'm on the ABA track is what they call it. And it's for applied and professional psychology. So that's the grad school I'm in. Also, by the way, this is my first time doing a mukbang and like I keep forgetting to eat. And I also feel weird eating on camera. So 
You're probably not, I'll be eating in between takes, but you're probably not going to see me actually eating while talking because I just feel weird. I'll probably get more used to it as I do more mukbangs, so apologies for that. So I clearly can't speak for um, all types of grad schools and grad programs outside of psychology. I can only speak for mine. So when it comes to doing being in a grad school program for psychology, um, the workload, yeah, is totally different. Um, it's a lot more readings. Like I, at least for me, I was able to get by through undergrad by not really reading through things so super carefully like and we didn't I was never given really like stu case studies to um read and and like write about and to really discuss about in class but that's what mostly the grad my grad school program does like my classes you have to read through all types of psychology like case studies um and be prepared to discuss it in class and then even write uh papers on it so the workload is obviously very uh, different and more detail oriented. Um, and there is a lot more writing. I've written more papers in this one semester than like two years of undergrad, so. Also, by the way, can we talk about how pretty my drink looks? It literally looks like an ombre drink, but it's the, obviously, as always, the dragon drink with light ice. Um, and I got the venti, but look how pretty it looks. So, like I was saying, I've written a lot of papers. I've, I've, it's more, my classes so far have been more about writing papers and class participation than actual exams. Um, of course, I took finals and everything, but a couple of my classes didn't have midterms. And there was one class where your only grade was based on two papers. Like, that was it. Um, there was no type of exam or anything like that. I find that to be easier only because... I would rather, I can't believe what I'm saying this, but I'd rather write a paper and be able to express like my thoughts and everything than having to sit in the classroom and just take a test um, and having to study and remember things. Like I just find writing papers a lot easier. So I find that I didn't have that much trouble with writing the papers during grad school because it was what I preferred. But it was a lot, um, you really got to be on top of deadlines and dates and all that. Like, obviously, you should in undergrad, but definitely in grad school, uh, the dates could be, you could have four things due at once um, for one day. So you really got to plan your time out um, and really, really pay attention to details way more in grad school. Um and also another thing, a lot of people in undergrad, I wasn't really like this, but I know a lot of people in undergrad who didn't really go to class if they didn't feel they needed to, um, like especially if the professor wasn't taking attendance or anything like that. But in grad school, like you can't mess around. You, you cannot just blow off class and not go, like unless you're absolutely like sick or an emergency happens. Because I think all four of my classes too, they said if you are absent for three or more classes you just get an f um because it is grad school it's a lot different and the standards are a lot higher and professors expect more of you be especially because you got accepted into the program so definitely you be prepared to you have to go to class like that's one thing like a lot of people say that for undergrad but then they find out that oh they don't really need to for a class but in grad school you have to go to class like every single class you can't just blow it off and just try to wing it by not um going to class like you have to and i also just wanted to touch on the whole interview process for me um i know a lot of people ask about how the interview is and how i got in and stuff i think i didn't i wasn't i didn't find myself stressing a lot because it was for the school i went to undergrad for um when I was actually in the interview, it felt really comfortable, and they gave me a tour of the building. They, sh they showed me around first, um, and they mostly talked to me and gave me an idea of what their program expects and what the classes would be like. Um, so I didn't have a really stressful interview experience, but I say for every interview anyway in life to just be yourself and to just really try to make it 
try not to make it so formal like try to be more comfortable um definitely ask questions and like as for grad school ask all the types of questions about the program try to do your research before and really get an idea of what the program is about and what their expectations are um and just really like hype up yourself like hype up your experiences that's what i did when i did i really talked a lot about my research um assistant thing that i did my senior year of undergrad i really dis i really gave, gave her details of what exactly i did and how i observed in schools and everything and then i talked about my job experience a lot so just don't be scared to hype yourself up because that's what they want to hear like they they want to know about your experiences so don't be too shy and modest um about talking about yourself because that's what they really want. Overall though, I would say my first semester of grad school was pretty stressful because I did a lot of, I had to get used to doing like a lot of work and a lot of reading because I don't really like reading that much. But I thought it was stressful yet a really good first semester of grad school. I did, I did get my grades back and I did get above a 3.0 GPA for the first semester. But be that's because I really did um, work hard and I didn't slack off. I really focused a lot on my work and going to class and paying attention. While also at the same time, I made a lot of uh, really good friends ready my first semester. Um, it's a lot easier to make friends too because you're finally, you're all, it's because grad school is so small for the most part and you're all there for the same exact specific thing like you most like most of us all want the same career at the end because that's why we're there so it's a lot easier to connect with classmates and everything because um and share each other's experiences like for example my first during the semester too i was able to meet someone in class who hooked me up with my new job um that has to do with ABA, like an ABA company. And I would never would have gotten that um, if I wasn't in grad school without the help from her. It's all about making connections. Um, not like while also making friends, of course, but it's also about making connections and hearing about other people's experiences and really deciding for yourself if this is really what you want to do because grad school is no time to mess around um, because also way more expensive and it's way more work. So you really, really have to be 100%, 110% sure that that's what you want to do. And if you really don't, then you need to decide it like fast, like quick, like within the first semester. Um, so that you're able to find out what you really want to do and then be connected to the people who you want to surround yourself with um, when it comes to your career wise and people who could help you in the future and also professors too. So grad school is really a time for connecting, making connections, and um, just really focusing on the work. All right, and now for the second part of the video. Um, spoiler alert, um, if you haven't watched the show You on Netflix, um, I'm just warning you now that I'm going to talk about most of season two. So please click out of this video if you don't want to know the spoilers. Um, and if you just comment below if you have any questions about grad school or anything that I haven't touched on that I could talk more about in a future video. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what else to really say because it was only a semester. So I could maybe do another video after my first year at grad school, maybe this summer. So just comment below if there's anything you would like me to talk about about grad school. So now, moving on to season two of You. So, season two of You was crazy. I thought season one was really good, but season two was like even wilder. Um, just want to touch on season one for a second since I never made a season one video, but um, I thought it was good and the ending was kind of annoying only because it seemed like the typical ending, like, oh, Joe gets away with it and Beck. I was more annoyed too because he did all this stuff for Beck and then she winds up dying in the end. So it's like, 
really? Like, you did all that and then you just wind up killing her. So I was just like, okay. Um, <laughs> but Beck was pretty annoying though like I liked her in the beginning and then she just got annoying when she started sleeping with the therapist like come on girl like he was right all along he had a feeling that you were seeing the therapist and you kept insisting no 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 and it turns out you were I'm not saying she deserved to die obviously but like she was pretty that's when I started not to like her so I didn't feel that bad <laughs> I was just more annoyed that Joe did all this and then for nothing pretty much and also my favorite character of season one was Peach Salinger. Peach Salinger deserves so much better. I loved her. I love Shay Mitchell. So I loved her character and she deserved way better. But that's all I'm going to say on season one. Um, that I was just, oh, uh, with the ending and Paco and all that. Like, oh, Paco's protecting Joe. Like, he totally just groomed this little boy to, he like brainwashed this little boy to, justify killing people and think it's okay and then he's out here protecting a serial killer so yeah moving on to season two i feel like season two had a whole different vibe because it was in la obviously we all know i love los angeles so i was so hyped that all the, the all of season two like joe joe's in la and then they're like filming i don't know if they actually filmed in la but it looked like it um and I just love the whole Cali vibe. And for the most part, it was funny because the season was actually making fun of like people that live in LA. So I thought it was funny though. And I liked the vibes and everything. So already season two was good <laughs> for me when I was watching the first episode. So season two starts off and then he meets love. And I'm just like, oh, here we go again. I was just expecting it to be just like the whole story with him and Beck. Um, but then when we got to know more about love, like her backstory and everything with her family, I was actually feeling bad for this girl. Like I really felt for her. She's been through a lot with her husband and all that. I was just like, oh my God, now she meets Joe and Joe is about to ruin her life even more. Like, cause she already has problems. So now Joe's just coming to make it 10 times worse. Um, and her brother 40, oh my gosh, I love 40. <laughs> he was so funny and he definitely deserved better. Um, he was annoying when we, when we first got introduced, but then throughout the episodes, I was just like, 40 is amazing. Like he's, I felt so bad for him to him and love their whole family, what they've been through. And I just think 40 deserved way, way better. That was the thing too, like in season one, I only really had one favorite character and it was Peach. But this season two, I liked better because I liked pretty much all of the characters. They were really growing on me, um, especially like I think my top my top favorites were probably 40 and like Delilah. I really liked Delilah. I don't know if a lot of people love her or hate her, but I think she deserved better too. Um, and I really liked her and Ellie too. Ellie deserved way, way better. So I feel like the characters were more likable this season compared to season one. Um, and I just love the way that this show is so beautifully written that, and I think Penn Badgley, I think that's how you say his name, he plays the part so perfectly that, yeah, you hate Joe. Obviously, Joe's a bad person, but you find yourself like kind of on his side about things sometimes, especially because it's told from his perspective. Like the things he says sometimes, I like laugh like I'm actually laughing out loud when I'm watching this because his one-liners are like hilarious like his inside thoughts that he's narrating the scene he's so funny and it literally if you watch Gossip Girl like you know him as Dan it's literally Dan Humphrey like on <laughs> steroids like five times he's great like he plays the part so well so that's the reason the main reason why I really really like the show because it's written so well and he plays it so well that you find your Joe, you know Joe's a villain, but you find yourself kind of rooting for him sometimes and siding with him and laughing at his jokes. And that just shows the realities of how serial killers could work. Like they could be like Ted Bundy, they could be so charming and so funny, but like they're actually like horrible people. Like they've killed people. So the I think the writing was also better in season two. Um, and the storylines were a lot better. So this whole thing happens with love, like, whatever. Then the breakup was kind of weird. Like, I'm just like, okay, like... But then it 
made sense more when he started like hanging out with Delilah. So I was like, oh, this should be interesting. Like it's going to be maybe like a love triangle situation. Um, and I really liked Delilah. So that everything that happened and then that whole thing with Candace, I was rooting for Candace too. Like season one, when she showed up, I was like, yeah, she's finally going to get Joe. Um, and then season two, when he runs away to LA and then he, she winds up finding him and even pretending to be 40's girlfriend and being a different person. And Joe's like nervous. And so I was like, yes, Candace will get him. She's the one per she was probably Joe's like real true love. Like he really actually loves her in a sick way, but she's going to be the one to come up in here and mess, him mess his plans up and really expose him for who he is. So I was rooting for her until she decided to completely mess up and call love like just to prove a point to love that oh i was right i'm not a cr the crazy ex-girlfriend see joe's a murderer he's cr i was right all along like she let her pride get in the way too much instead of calling the freaking police to come get joe i don't understand that's where she messed up that and then i was just like candace like are you kidding me you really had to let your pride get in the way and try to call love and tell her oh look 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 what he's done like we should call the police. No, Candace, you should have called the police as soon as you trapped Joe in that box. And can we talk about the glass box, box for a second? Like, that's the one thing. Uh, there is mostly, like, makes sense and it's realistic most for the most part. But there's some instances where I'm just like, come on, like, it's just for a show. Like, it's not, it's too, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's not realistic enough. The glass box. How was Joe able to build a replica of that weird box and make a new one in LA? Like, how how is he able to do that? And second of all, the storage unit. I don't know really that much about storage units, but I have a feeling that they're really not that big. Like, that storage unit was literally the size of an apartment. I was just like, all right, this is getting too ridiculous. You know what I mean? But when Candace trapped him in that box... I was like, he's gonna find a way to get out because he built it. So you better call the police right now. But no, 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 no. Let me call love and like get her down there and show her. And then that's when I had a feeling. I was like, what if love actually killed Delilah? Because the entire time I was watching that episode, I was like, I really don't think Joe did it. Um, it would be too predictable and too, like, I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be a twist. Like, And then when she called love in, I was like, what if Love did this and Candace just brought her in and Love already knew what happened? Um, and it, I turned out to be right. I had a feeling, but I wasn't sure. But I turned out to be right. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> Love is crazier than we all thought. And I actually felt bad for Love because she's been through a lot. But when she ex explained how she killed Delilah and like her whole plan and then how she was going to like deal the, with the whole thing with Ellie, I'm just like... No, no, no. She, even Joe was like, okay, this girl is way too crazy for me. I need to kill her. <laughs> you know, it's bad when even Joe was like, what is wrong with you? Like, why did you kill Delilah? Um, so I was like, oh, no. And then if, then when she killed Candace, I was like, "We, Candace, it was your fault. Like, you messed up. I was so mad at Candace. So mad. And then when Joe tries to kill her, because he's even freaked out and weirded out, and he's like, why did you do that? Why did you kill Delilah? She pulls the, oh, I'm pregnant storyline. And I'm like, okay, like, I'm just like, of course, there has to be a pregnancy storyline because that's how every show goes. Someone has to get pregnant. And of course, it's love. So I'm just like, oh my gosh. Um, now it's going to go a completely different turn because she's pregnant. And I was like, are they probably going to live like happily ever after? Because even Joe was like, that's my baby, right? And I was like, what if love's lying and it, it's not even Joe's? But it probably is Joe's. Um, and he, she's like, it's yours. It's yours. And I have a, I, it's a girl. I have a feeling. I'm like, love, what? <laughs> what? She's crazy. Um, and then you flash forward after 40, rest in peace, 40, <laughs> he gets killed. And then they're in like the suburbs now. I really want to know where they moved to. I wonder if they're still in California or if they're in a whole completely different state and just ran away from LA and they're all that mess. Um, cause they never specifically said where they went, where they moved to, but then it ends like, Oh, like what a happy little ending with two psychopaths and their little 
poor baby who's going to have two psycho parents. Like, oh, what a, what, a, what a nice family. And then it ends Joe looking at his neighbor. That kind of pissed me off because I was just like, Joe, you were saying how it all came into place that you and love were meant to be and you're having you're about to be a dad, Joe. You're going to be a dad and you're still looking at your neighbor. I'm like, oh, my God. But then I was reading on Twitter and stuff that people were probably like, oh, it's probably his mom, Joe's mom. So that would be interesting. I actually hope it'll be his mom and she gets he gets to like see her after all these years. And I hope it's not the same old thing where it's just another girl that he tries to protect or preys on and then kills. I don't know, like, it would be way, way more interesting if that was his mom. So I'm really hoping it's his mom. Um, and speaking of that, anyway, I like too in this season how they went, they talked more about his childhood. I thought it was interesting. Um, and they did more flashbacks about him and his mom. So I like that, that they put more of that this season. So that's why I really, really hope that it's his mom because that's obviously a really he had a weird messed up childhood obviously but to confront his mom now would be crazy so that's really my take on it overall it was a pretty good season way better than season one i'm hyped for season three it was there was more twists um i really do felt i felt so bad for ellie that's the thing like this poor girl has no family now. Her sister was all she had, and now she doesn't even have her sister. And Joe just, like, sent her away, like, go to this train and then go there. So now she has to start a whole new life by herself, and she's only, what, 15? But that's, that's the thing I the one thing I don't like about this show is I think um, they're probably going to get completely new different characters for season three. But I did like the characters from season two, and I don't want, like, Ellie, she's probably going to be gone. I don't think she's going to come back. Like with Paco, they just threw out Paco's character. Like when he moved to California, they could have easily brought him back for season two. That would have been interesting, but they seem to just introduce a whole new set of characters for each season. So I'm interested. I'm interested to see who probably that's going to be characters based on whatever neighborhood they move to. Um, but I really just hope that his mom will be one of those characters. Um, but overall, season two was a wild one. And I really, really hope that they don't make us wait over a year for season three. Like, how long does it take to do a season, Netflix? It's only 10 episodes. Come on. Like, let's get it moving. Because <laughs> that even happened. I had to rewatch season one before season two came out because I kind of forgot some things that happened because a lot of things happened. So hopefully they don't make us wait for so long. I'm ready to rewatch season two again because it was just a wild season. I know I'm going to have to rewatch it because too many things happen for me to remember. But um, I really hope that y'all enjoyed this video. If you watch you, please comment below too what you think about season two and what you hope for season three. And again, with grad school, anything, you comment anything you want, um, anything you want me to talk about for future videos. Um, and if you like this mukbang, next time for my next mukbang, I'll definitely try to eat more on camera and maybe get more comfortable. We'll see. Maybe not. But <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel and comment below. And I'll see y'all next time.